Welcome to Sunday Parish Church. This morning's sermon is to believe or what to believe? That is the question by the Reverend Hugh Davis. Thank you for joining me here at St. Swithin's in Sandy in Bedfordshire on Trinity Sunday, which is the Sunday after Pentecost when we traditionally look at the character of God and what God has revealed about himself. There's a story told about a mother watching a son uh, do a drawing in the kitchen on the kitchen table. A little toddler was drawing a, a, a big splodge of orange on, in the middle of the paper. And when the mother asked her, what is that, son? The little boy looks up and he says, well, mum, that's a picture of God. And uh, mum, with a smile on her face, says, yes, son, but nobody knows what God is like. And the little boy, in all his innocence, looks up and said, no, but they will do when they see my drawing. Well, we don't know what God is like. Why should we believe in a God at all? Today we're going to just spend the next 10 minutes or so uh, thinking about the character of God and who God might be. Why is this an important question? It's important to us because whether we believe in a God or don't believe in a God or what sort of God we believe in affects the way in which we live. And it's fundamental to our understanding of the world and therefore it's crucial to the way in which we live. If there is a God, or if there is not a God, or if there is a God, what is this God like? The reason that I believe in God is a number of multiple strands. It seems to be part of what it means to be human, to be spiritual, to believe in love, to believe in freedom. All cultures seem to have an understanding and a belief, not just in the physical and the material, but in the uh, spiritual side of life as well but they name it differently societies have chosen uh, different ways of worship different ways of culture different ways of ethics and morality different ways of uh, marking birth different ways of marking the passing from this world animism spiritualism pantheism polytheism monotheism communism humanism materialism atheism all of these different ways are saying we have some understanding of what it is to be human and that's why whether we believe or don't believe in a god or what sort of god we believe in is really quite important jesus's disciples asked him to teach them to pray and so he taught them this prayer he said when you pray begin like this our father who art in heaven and just those words themselves describe a, an important thing. If we believe that God is our Father, that in itself says something to us about his relationship to us. That's what Jesus was saying. Treat one another like family. Call God your Father and treat each other like brothers and sisters. Regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of beauty, and regardless of brains, regardless of colour and regardless of class, you are family. You are human beings together of equal worth and equal value. We have one heavenly father. There is a brotherhood and a sisterhood. When one suffers, all suffer. There is a solidarity in our humanity. There's no place for white supremacy in the Christian gospel. For those who follow Jesus. There's no place for racial segregation. We are one family. Jesus said, call him our father, not your father, but our father. And our father who art in heaven. It's a higher moral authority that we have. Not just my own authority, not just doing the things that I want or I feel best, not just my personal predilections or my personal preferences, but there is one to whom one day I will give account. And therefore, says Jesus, if you will call him your father, if you will know that he is in heaven, then share what you have. It is our daily bread that we pray for, not mine, but ours that we share. And as we share our daily bread with one another, we are to forgive others just as we need forgiveness ourselves and we also need to live for what is right 
and to stand up for what is good. Because his is the kingdom, not ours. We're not kings, we are only under him. And it is a good thing when the nation's rulers understand that their lives are fragile, that they won't live forever, that one day we must all give account of ourselves. And so at the coronation of the queen, it comes out very, very clearly when she is given the orb and the scepter, there is a little cross upon the top of the orb. Christ is the king of this world and she rules under him. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. And you will give me power to live that life well. And I will live it under you. And I will give glory to you and thanks to you and praise to you for the way in which you have given me life. Yes, it matters what I believe. Yes, it matters whether I believe in God or not. Yes, it matters what sort of God I believe in. It is important that we know there is a higher power. Ask the addict in his 12-step program. It's important that the king and the president know that they are accountable and they should have a certain amount of humility when they rule over others. It's important for you and me to find our purpose, to find our place of, in this world, to discover a power that comes from him and that a peace will come when we follow him. But how can we know what God is like? How can we know whether he exists or not? Is it just my personal imagination or my personal preference or just a social construct that there is a God? I believe it because not only is it universal to all cultures, but it's fundamental to the heart and the psyche of what it is to be human. The Bible says we're made in the image of God and it's a fundamental mistake to turn that upside down and make God in our image. That's called idolatry, to create a God for ourselves or even a God of ourselves to believe that we are alone in this universe and therefore can live just as we please. In today's society, we need to grasp that his is the kingdom, the power and the glory. For too many people, it has become mine is the kingdom, mine is the power, mine is the glory. But you say, I, I find it difficult to believe in God. And I certainly don't believe in a God who has fits of rage and irrational miracles and prejudices. Well, I don't believe in that God either. I believe in a God who has revealed himself. How would I know what he is like unless he were to reveal it to me? There is so much that I know that I don't know. I don't know how a mobile phone works. I don't know how this machine in front of me here is transmitting this to you. I don't know how the universe works. And although science can tell us so very much, it has its limits. There are trillions and trillions and trillions of stars. And there are billions and trillions and quadrillions of atoms in the world. And yet, there is more. Some scientists would say at least 25% of our universe is what is called dark matter. Matter that cannot be detected, that cannot be known to science today. We only know it because we theorize it. Dark matter, well, dark energy apparently is 70% of the energy of the universe. It must be there, but we can't detect it, but we theorize it. There is so much that we don't know. And therefore, what can I know about God? I don't want to make him up in my own image. What can I know? I can know what he has revealed to us. For he, out of his heart of love, has come to us. Absolutely, the question is not just do I believe in God, but what sort of God do I believe in? I can't just pick my own religion, take it as a lucky dip, decide to choose any of the ones that are out there on offer? <laughs> Is there any that will give me hope of something more than just a best guess or follow a human leader? 
Well, I would contend that Jesus is unique. Jesus is the one who came from God, he says. When he spoke to Nicodemus, he says he's come down from God, that God sent his only son into the world so that the world might believe, so that the world might be saved. He didn't send his son to condemn the world, but to save and rescue the world. That's how Jesus put it. And Jesus spoke to his disciples on numerous occasions when he said to them in John chapter 5, in verse 18, he says, I and the Father are one. And it was for that that the people picked up stones to stone him because of his blasphemy. John writes at the beginning of his gospel in chapter 1, in verse 18, it says that he is the one who came down from heaven and made God known. Paul, writing Colossians 1, verse 15, picks up that theme and says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. What a beautiful picture, the image of the invisible God. Some others have described Jesus as the human face of God. When John was recording Jesus' last words to his disciples in John chapter 14, in that great passage where Jesus says, I'm going to my father's house and in my father's house there is many rooms. His friend Thomas said, Lord, we, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus says, Thomas, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. And then Philip says, well, Jesus, that's all very well, but, but show us the father. Sh show us what God is like. And Jesus says to him, Philip, have I not been with you for so many years now? And do you not realize that I and the father are one? If you have seen me, you have seen him. Because his character and my character are one. I only do what I see the father doing. And so if you want to know what God is like, then take a good look at me. If I was to say that to you, you'd think I was crazy and you'd be absolutely right. You'd either think that I was crazy or else I was manipulating you and wanting to get you to be my followers for my own end and therefore an evil man. And that's what C.S. Lewis, the writer of the Narnia Chronicles, writes. He put it this way, didn't he? He said, Jesus was either mad or bad or God. He was either as nutty as a fruitcake thinking himself to be God, or totally deluded, or else he was a great con man, fooling everybody if he knew that it wasn't true, but just trying to live it out for himself. Not a very successful con man, I would argue, for he only had three years of it, whereas most can keep it going for longer than that. No, Jesus was so much more. Look at Jesus' character, and his words, and his deeds, and his death, and his resurrection. For no one else in all of history has ever been spoken of in this way. There has been no resurrection in history that has been attested like this, that has been spoken of like this, that has been believed in this way. He is utterly unique, and he is worthy of listening to. 